So today I'm going to be talking about something that I wish I knew about back when I first started using BSPWM. So I'm going to be talking about BSPC Subscribe. So what this basically lets you do is subscribe to every single event that BSPWM generates. So what this means is that if you are the sort of hacky person who likes to work around with BSPWM, you can actually get access to every single thing the window manager is doing. So you can completely change the behavior of it. So I'm gonna talk about some examples in just a moment, but before that, if you're new to the channel, you know it too, and let's jump right into it. Okay, so before we get to those examples, let's just have a look at the man page for BSPC, and I can't believe I missed this. So if we go man BSPC, and then we go to events, so if we go down to BSPC subscribe, that's the actual command you use. So subscribe, subscribe, there we go. Okay, so to actually subscribe to your event, you write BSPC subscribe like you would with like BSPC query, BSPC node, all of that stuff. So it's just another sub command for BSPWM or for BSPC. So this part isn't interesting in and of itself though. So you can do things like you can have FIFO, so print a pass to the first in first out from which the events can be read and return. And you can also stop printing events after a certain count. So this by itself, not too interesting. So what about the events themselves though? So where are those? So if we search for events in here, we can see what we're actually looking for. So in here, we have a general report. So that I believe is a report of every single thing the window manager is actually doing. You're probably not gonna do that though. The part you're gonna care about are all of these individual events. So you have like a monitor add, monitor rename, monitor remove. So much stuff in here, like desktop rename, desktop remove, desktop swap, desktop transfer. I'm not gonna read through everything in here, but you get a pretty rough idea of what it can do. And the ones that I generally care about are these ones here. So node add, node remove, node swap, node transfer, node focus. And this is really, really cool. You can even do stuff when you like change the geometry of a node. So if you resize a node, you can just do some action on it. Or if you change the flag of a node, or if you do a pointer action, or you change the layer of a node, you can do stuff on every single one of these events. So let's just have a look at how it works, and then I can get into some of the examples. So I've got a little script that I knocked up not too long ago. So if we go into subscribe, Here's what the little script does. Now it's nothing too fancy. All it does is basically makes a node go full screen when I make a new node. So if you remember from just before when I had that man page up, let's go down to the event that we're actually looking at here. So node underscore add. Okay. So if we look in here, we've got the name of the event, then you've got the monitor ID, desktop ID, IP ID, and node ID. I'm not sure what the IP ID is. I yeah, I actually have no idea what that one means, but you're probably not gonna care about it anyway. You probably care about the other ones. So the monitor ID, the desktop ID, and the node ID. If you care about the IP ID, then you probably know what it means. But anyway, we're just gonna ignore that one for now. So I kind of went off track there. Let's just look at how we actually subscribe to the event. So you write BSPC subscribe, and then the name of the event. So in this case, it's node add. And then if you were to then pipe that into a while statement, that'll just keep running while the event keeps going. So that'll just keep going and going and going until you actually cancel the script. So this will let you have basically an infinite loop that'll just run every single time an event comes in. So it's not running like every half second, every second. It's only gonna be running every time an event happens. So you don't have to worry about it just completely bogging down your system. Okay, so the actual format of subscribing is very basic. Just subscribe to the event, pipe it into a loop. There's a couple of other ways you can do it. This is just my preferred method and it's a really clean way of doing it. I know you can put it at the bottom here and like redirect it in, but I feel like that's just a little less clean. Anyway, we're just doing it like this. And then what I'm actually doing in here is running BSPC node and what I'm doing is just setting the selected node to full screen. So basically, what I'm doing to do that is I'm orking out the ID of the node. So if we look in here, we can see what's actually being printed out by this event. So it's node add at point one, monitor ID at point two, three, four, and then node ID is at the fifth point or the, the fifth place. So if we just ork out the fifth element, that's just gonna be the node ID. So if we just run this little script, so subscribe. Okay, now if I just make a new window, so let's just make a new window of LF. So as soon as I made that, it went full screen. So obviously if I just made the unfull screen and then do some stuff around here, nothing's gonna happen. Or if I make a new window, for example. So 
I made a Pamixer window and this one went full screen this time. So as you can see, that gives you an idea of how that works. So every time the event actually happens, so if we actually write it in the actual terminal rather than in that script, so we can go bspc uh, subscribe node underscore add. So if we run it like this, now it's just gonna be running in our terminal. So if I make a node, as we can see, it prints that out to the terminal. We make another node, it prints it out again. So that's what it's actually doing. So it only runs every time the event actually happens. So if you've never done an event-driven system, basically that's how they work. So I said that there's some cool stuff you can do with this. So what could you do, for example? Now, one example, obviously, is the one that I just showed where you have a window being made full screen whenever it's created. Now you can just do that with BSPC rules. That's not too cool by itself. But another one you could do is every time a node is made, you put it onto an empty desktop. So that's something you can't just do with rules. You can move it to a new desktop, but if you want it to always be on an empty desktop, then you can do that with events. Or one really cool one I saw, which I haven't done a video on yet, is that you can make BSPWM effectively behave like DWM, which is really cool. So I wasn't sure how you could even possibly go about that, but then I found out about events and I realized, wait, you can just completely change the behavior of the window manager. Another one you could do is say you like having a grid-based system. So you could make it so that every time you make a node, it's going to be put in like an equal grid. So you could also resize the other nodes through that as well. You'd probably have to use floating windows to do that though. But if that's something you wanted to do, then you could actually do that by mapping to those node creation events and then handling what's happening to the nodes. Or one that I wrote myself that I'm actually gonna do a video on as well is this right here. So we have a look at it. Um, I believe it's called uh, clean full screen, something like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna go a bit more in depth into what this one does, but basically what this does is fixes the problem with full screening in BSPWM. So I'm not gonna go too in depth into it right now, but basically it handles stuff for like desktop focus, node transfers, node removes, and node state changes to basically make it so whenever I make a node go full screen, it fixes the problem that I had with BSPWM, which is where it doesn't actually hide all of the background nodes. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if I just didn't use transparency, but you know what? I like transparency, so instead of getting rid of something I like, I'm just gonna hack my window manager to make it do something that I want it to do. So something else you could do is you could make it so whenever you add a new node, it's going to then be swapped into being the biggest node, for example. So this gives you an idea of all of the stuff that you can do with BSPC subscribe. Now, obviously I can't really show every single one of these examples and I can't really show every single possible thing that you could do. But if you have a programming mindset, I think that you can look at some of these events and think of some things that you want your window manager to do and how you can map from the events onto the actions that you want to take place. So obviously if you don't have much of a programming mindset, this probably is completely meaningless to you, but it's not too complicated for someone who has done at least a little bit of programming. If you understand the events that are taking place and you understand the, I guess, final product you want to happen, I think you can very, very easily map between the two. So this isn't just a thing that BSPWM can do. I believe that DWM also has a subscription method. I know that Qtile is all about hacking it with Python. And this is why I like these hackable window managers. So not just BSPWM, but also those other ones I listed. I do like i3. And I think i3 is a very, very good starting place for people who do want to start using a tiling window manager. And Awesome is probably also a really good one as well. I don't know how hackable Awesome is. I haven't really tried it myself. But once you move to the more bare bones and hackable window managers, you realize how powerful a window manager can be if either you're willing to put in the effort to actually configure it yourself, or better yet, if you're not someone who's much of a programmer, you could just download someone else's scripts or someone else's patches to completely change the behavior of your window manager. And that, I think that is kind of the essence of running a Linux system like this. It's all about hacking it to be exactly the way that you want it to be. Yeah, you could go and run like KDE if you want to get some real work done. Yeah, you could run GNOME or whatever you want to run. 
And those are probably really good desktop environments. But for the people who are more hacky in mind or just want something that they can just completely change the behavior of, I think that for those people, having something like this with BSPWM, with DWM, with Qtile is really, really cool. And honestly, I don't think I'd ever be able to go back to a system that didn't have a tiling window manager, especially one like BSPWM. So I hope that anyone who didn't already know about BSPC Subscribe goes out and makes something really cool with it. So obviously I have my clean full screen script, which I need to clean up just a little bit. And then I'm going to talk about in a video, but that's going to be coming up pretty shortly. But you've also got things like the DWM script for BSPWM. And I'm sure there's just plenty of other awesome stuff out there that I haven't already come across. But you know what? If something doesn't exist out there, make it for yourself. Put it out there, put it on GitHub, and maybe someone else will find some use from it as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so that'll be like my Telegram, my Discord, and all of that sort of stuff. So go there if you want to chat with me or get video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to go ahead and do that. But obviously, as always, if you don't want to support the channel, then you don't have to at all. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms, so that'll be my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.